<laughs> All righty. We're live. Tail. Yay. Oh, you got the cat. Now I need my pet. He comes in. He comes in as soon as we're like, we're going live. And he's like, yeah. Put me on camera. Yeah. My turn. Put it live. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to our MLP cast live stream panel. This is very exciting. Hello, everyone. And yes, in the chat, I am following there. So I see everything you guys are chatting about. And later, I'll see all your questionos. Uh, but for now, let's introduce ourselves. So for those oh, of you guys yeah. who don't know, I am Michelle Krieber. And if you couldn't already tell from the beautiful characters behind me, I play April Bloom on My Little Pony, and I'm also hosting this panel for today. So hello and welcome to my channel. <laughs> and uh, Rebecca, introduce Hi, yourself. Oh my goodness, Michelle, you're so adorable. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> um, I am Rebecca Schoikit. Hi, everyone out there. And uh, these are some of my characters over here. I play, I play um, Sunset Shimmer in the Equestria Girls. I'm the singing voice of Twilight Sparkle. Okay, I'm really not good at this, like, showing where. Oh, I'm yeah. so bad at that, too, because it mirrors. Singing. There she is. There she is. She's like, oh, okay, singing. And, um, and I also play the voice of Sugar Bell and Nightglider. Sugar Bell! <laughs> uh, <laughs> and Nicole, you're next on my screen. Oh, hi everyone. I'm Nicole Oliver and I just I just thought I'd join these people today. It looked like a fun place to be. <laughs> Who are you, man? Um, I'm just jocking them all. No. I uh, Princess Celestia, Cheerly, Tree Hugger, various other pony peoples and things over time and life and space in a decade and hi, I'm here. Hi, nice to see everyone Tree sort of. Hugger? Yeah. Huh? Tree hugger? That's awesome. Tree hugger, man. <laughs> Fabulous. Uh, Kathy. I'm Kathy Westlock. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the live stream. And as most of you know, I play the voice of Spike, the dragon who was sand blasting the castle the other day. And also Coco Pamel, Coco Pamel, and Mayor Mayor, who I don't know where she is. But anyway, thank Mayor Mayor. for joining us. I know me too. She didn't get enough air time. She was always <laughs> so extravagant. All of us didn't get enough air time. <laughs> <laughs> But great to be here. I can't wait to answer some of your questions. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Michelle, for hosting. Oh, my pleasure. And I also wore the appropriate colors, I felt. So mm -hmm. there yeah. you go. And Vince. Hi, I am Vincent Tong. I um, play, oh, I got the right hand. Uh, Garble. Flash Sentry, oh, Garble. Garble the Dragon. I think this guy's name is Sandal Bar, Sandalwood. Sandalwood, um, probably. D Donut Joe some other um, uh, rumble and uh, sh f feather feather bangs. Um, Sugar Bell. Chloe, Chloe liked that. You're that, just making uh, them up time. now. You're just making them Sugar up. Sugar Bell. Yeah, hold on, there was one more. Oh, the, um, what's the, the new kid? The new kid in school, the, the... Sandbar. 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 That's Sandbar. it. Sandbar, you said that. I think that's it. Sandbar. Sandbar. Yeah. yeah, dude, guys, just chill. We're gonna dude. get through this. I don't know why Good Garble's on. Like, why is Garble on? Garble is a bad mother. Garble. Garble. <laughs> I don't have a. Right. I don't have it's a little really, muty really thing well on here. Zoom, so we'll keep it clean, folks. Don't worry. Oh, we'll, oh, we'll keep it nice and clean. Um, <laughs> and also, guys, Andrea will be joining us. She's just uh, doing something. She got to finish something up, and then she'll be joining us in our Zoom call. Also, yes. let's all make sure she's comfortable right away because she's going to have to like jump right into it. So, uh, yeah, so she'll be joining us at some point. And I thought I'd get the ball rolling with some classic pony questions and a couple of questions about what we've been up to since we've all last seen each other. It's been absolutely way too long since I've seen all your amazing faces in person. Like, it's crazy. IRL. I know. IRL. Do <laughs> But we're doing better up here in Vancouver, so hopefully that'll change soon. And yeah. then, yeah, guys, I want to make sure the majority of our live stream today, it's going to be an hour, uh, is going to be answering your guys' questions in the chat. But again, to get the ball rolling, I'm going to start off with some. So, uh, in no particular order, what was the moment, you guys, that you realized voice acting was for you? Voice acting was your passion and you wanted to pursue it as a career? I'll go first. Go. Um, <laughs> when... When uh, my siblings and I, mostly my my big brother and I, um, were would drive would be driving in the back of the family Volvo, and we would reenact 
the Sesame Street vignettes, um, either songs or, um, but our favorite was when we figured out that we could recreate the voice of the Twiddlebugs. Mm. And so we, we learned the, the going, we want to go to the pool and they, they're like, cancel the pearl we we'll never cancel the pearl because they were so little and they were trying like um i know we can put the best to the zoo or something like they were going to the zoo that's what it was and so we we found that we could make our mom laugh till she was almost crying so that was <laughs> where i was like nice. this is really fun i think i'd like to do this i think i could do this <laughs> that was like when we were like really little did you be voice actor too rebecca from way back when well, I um, I didn't do any. Well, I did. I did have one like commercial that a friend of ours was in radio, and and he came over to our house and recorded us. So I actually got an opportunity to be on the radio in a commercial when I was young. But I'd never done any um, any actual voice recordings for animation or anything until af long after um, or when I was in college. Actually, I went to Sheridan College, where a lot of amazing animators have graduated, and. Uh, and so I got to be on some of their lip syncing reels. Somebody was there because I was in the musical theater program. They they posted up, you know, hey, want to check, uh, you know, do you want a chance to get in the studio? And I was like, heck yeah. So I played about five different characters just saying one liners like God, any fries or something like that. <laughs> little things like that where they were just, you know, they'd the director would describe their character. The animator had come up with this new for their final project. And so it was a really big deal for them. And I got to do a handful of those. It was so much fun. Awesome. And also that voice you did earlier sounds like the way I voice my dog when he walks around. Uh -huh. So I like that voice. All right. And Nicole. <laughs> Um, well, I, uh, knew I wanted to be an actor. So I started out and I still work film and television. Mostly I went to York university in Toronto and, um, but I, I was going to be a lawyer and then I did the high school play and I remember kind of walking out and saying my lines and then bowing at the end and I was hooked. So that's when I knew I wasn't going to be a lawyer anymore. And that's when, parents, <laughs> that's when my parents knew I wasn't going to be a lawyer anymore. So they said, go to school. So I went to York. And then, um, yeah, pretty soon I got an agent right out of school and my on-camera agent, there was a voice department and I went and met that agent, Donna Trimble at Characters. She's like, you got a great voice. And she goes, put this audition down for me. And I booked it and I had my first job the next day. And so lucky. Um, <laughs> just kind of, kind of went from there. And I love acting. It is all acting. Voice is just how we choose to tell the story as opposed to using our face and all our body and our, who we are in front of a camera. But um, you still have to be able to act, most importantly. Um, but uh, I loved how I could just be, it didn't wasn't so hanging on all of this all the time that I feel, I actually think it really, that's one part of the entertainment industry that you really have to have the talent. You can't just be a pretty face and fake it okay yeah so yeah so that's um that's how i knew yeah and that's the great thing about voice acting is it's not about any of that subjective external stuff it's all about the preparation and the and the raw talent and the passion right is that we don't have to worry about oh you're too tall for this or you don't match the character so much more freedom uh and that's why i love it as well kathy well I never set out to be a voice actor. I never even thought about acting, to be quite honest. I was going to be a film and television, uh, com no, well, a co composer, film and TV documentaries is what I set out to do. So I went to university uh, at Wilfrid Laurier in uh, Waterloo, which is on the skirts of Toronto. Mm -hmm. And uh, there I got a, into a co-op program with the CBC, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, and uh, began working there in Toronto and then got a promotion to Vancouver. And the host said, you got a nice voice. Have you ever thought of doing commercials? I said, no, voice what? What are you talking about? And they said, you should try it. So um, I did and got an agent through uh, one of the producers who worked in the drama department, knew somebody and started to do that. But when you were talking about your dog, Michelle, I used to talk to my gerbils and think when I was a child, that they, <laughs> they, knew, they knew what I was saying. I, like, I, really did. I was six or something. Yeah. Uh, like it's what you did was it Rebecca <laughs> her little turn on this little you know the bubble voice thing I had a hamster called Ernie and I had a <laughs> dribble called Whiskers Ernie. and my brother's was Nibbles so they inspired oh. me actually um but I did do some on-camera television work too and I'm on, I'm there to do it but I haven't had time to do it and I'm not going into that branch now so I did some on-camera acting 
but the voice acting bit me and I started with commercials. Um, and then uh, when I started to do my first animation job, it was a goose called Bessie the Chicken. No, Bessie the Goose. Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Bessie the, the Goose called Bessie Aren't the Chicken. Goose? That would have been the best. That would be funny. Geese can kill you. Uh, she was like kind of a hybrid, right? No labels, man. No labels. No labels. No labels. <laughs> <laughs> she started to talk like this and she was in the pond and nobody was able to come in the pond. And it was a voice match. So my first freaking <laughs> job freaked me out because Whoa. I didn't really know what I was doing. And then I had to actually voice match that. So my No pressure. Was, oh yeah, it was no fun. And then it turned <laughs> out to be a promo for a series and then it didn't even go. So huh. that's how I started and haven't turned back. Brilliant. Yay. And Vincent. Uh, I used to leave, uh, you know, back in the days, they used to have actual cassette tapes for answering machines. So I would be leaving like, welcome to the Tong family. You've reached us at a time when we can't come to the phone, so leave a message. And then the next day I would change it up to make it different. And I would just make it totally messed up. And I had to stop because no one left messages because everyone was so <laughs> um, But Why? I went to, I went to, I'm a huge Disney fan and I was lucky enough to go to Disney World when I was a kid. And uh, in Disney Studios, there's like a Foley artist kind of like behind the scenes, how do you make this sound? And they had a, a special guest and I was like, oh, who's this person gonna be? And it's Howie Mandel. And for me, I was like, this was my childhood celebrity because I loved Bobby's World. Bobby's World was my absolute favorite show. And he did Bobby, Bobby generic first. And I was like, whoa, he does Bobby. Like he's in real life right there doing the voice. And that was like the moment that I, could actually register that those things existed. There's an actor behind the character. Mm. And I think from then I was like, yeah, that would be cool. That was like the first time I thought that that could actually be an actual, you know, job. But then I pursued the very lucrative um, business of musical theater <laughs> and <laughs> instead. Um, but yeah, I, I eventually Fruitful. did land uh, some cartoon stuff. I do, my very first cartoon was a dubbing series in Toronto called Slam Dunk. And this was a, a manga that I used to yeah. read with some of my friends. Yeah. And so for me, I was like really excited to be a part of it. But my actual, I consider my first cartoon because that was dubbing. My first cartoon where I actually did prelay was Sushi Pack here in Vancouver, where I got to sit in the room with a I'm bunch hungry. of extremely talented folks. Nicole, you were in there for a few eps and uh, sat in there with like Scotty McNeil, Sam Vincent, Tara Strong, Andrew Francis, Kiara Zani, uh, Brian Dobson, and I just soaked everything in. And I just sat there like so quiet, like hoping I won't miss my line. I was sweating bullets, but everyone was so talented. And, and that was a great welcome for me. Yeah. Cool. Awesome, guys. And I'll, you know, you guys saw me last week in the in the cast panel with uh, Kelly and Claire. I'll just kind of briefly answer all the questions. Um, so I got into voice acting weirdly through my film and TV agent at the time. I was, I believe, six or seven. And I auditioned for Lucy and Charlie Brown in a Charlie Brown series. I got it. And then after that, I uh, signed with my current agent now, still Caroline at Characters Talent Agency. I've been with her since I was seven. And just growing up uh, in the voice acting world, I was always looking up to everyone in this chat, first of all. You guys are all people I've looked up to for a very long time. And it's a really awesome, Michelle, awesome I looked up form. to you. I was watching you <laughs> in theater before I started theater. No way. Yeah. Like playing Annie? Playing I must Annie have been Carol. like four feet tall. Totally. I'm still that height. That's okay. <laughs> What was Michelle? What was your first? What was your first theater role? Oh man, uh, well, I man, I, I did theater so young, starting so young. Um, yeah. But I think the big, big one I remember just from my childhood was definitely yeah, Annie at Tut's big theater under the stars uh, mm -hmm. stage here in Stanley Park in Vancouver, and that was a really, really fun experience. Uh, but yeah, m musical theater is a huge part of my foundations for sure, and it really translates well to voice mm -hmm. acting. Uh, mm -hmm. both both really fun art forms so yeah um i'm just gonna quickly address some of the super chats i yeah, saw I'm looking real at quick. that chat go by holy yeah there's so <laughs> many people it's awesome yeah yeah no it's great hello everyone again those of you who joined us recently Queensland, um, australia wow it's amazing 
I know actually we should do I, what I love to do on these kind of live streams is get everyone to like quickly type in where they're tuning in from in the world so why don't we actually do that now before I lose track of everything guys just type like what city you were in or what country you're in it's a fun exercise to see kind of how spread out everyone is it's cool it's all connect virtually like this mm. um but yeah so I have those five questions I want to start out with but why don't I kind of just sneak in some super chats yeah. in there yeah. Yeah, do um it. okay so okay great actually you know what this is perfect because this is kind of a question i had for everyone down the line um do we remember the day we got our first voice role in mlp and how did we feel slash react uh, i remember auditioning because i auditioned for first of all because it was a cartoon show where there were like 10 girl parts <laughs> and <laughs> one boy part Yay! Voiced by a woman. And so, sorry, Vince, but normally it's the other way around. And Absolutely. voiceover is still a part of the industry that Perfect. does designate um, he, she, uh, male, female, right? So I just need to specify that. Although there are some shows coming out where for animation where there's non-binary characters and they're casting non-binary actors and mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff. So um, inclusion is, is, is here, is coming, is getting better every day. But um yeah i remember auditioning for a, like a whole bunch of different characters and being very thankfully brought back in for a callback and uh i remember i got this part and i know what my little pony is it's been around for a while i've done voices in some of the other movies and i i was the voice the trailer voice for my little pony for a while too so i knew of it and i, I think i had a, I have an old doll somewhere it's probably if I kept it in its box, it must might have been worth something, but from like generation two or one or whatever. Um, I thought, oh, this is really cool. Okay, great work. Yay. I can pay my mortgage and feed my children. That's honestly what I thought. And then, and this will be fun. And I'll get a chance to see a bunch of people I really love and admire. It's cool. And then it kept going. And then it kept going. And then it, and then kept, it kept going. going. And then... <laughs> the conventions and being able to travel and meet everybody. So that was how, how I feel is how I feel now. Incredibly grateful, blessed. And I'm, I can't fathom that ponies done and brought <laughs> all of this. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got my part. My very first part was flash century. No, no, no. It was a uh, Prince blue blood. Sorry. Prince blue blood. And There's it was so a many. little minor little character. And, um, I, I booked it, you know, we were doing MP3 auditions. I did it in the closet and I booked it and I was in the room with all the main six. And I was like, holy cow, I'm in the room because I've heard about these, the bronies. Because I'm good friends with Ashley Ball. Me and her did singing and dancing for many years prior to us doing voiceover. So she was like, have you heard of these bronies? I'm like, no, I'm so intrigued. And so when I was doing the part, I was like, oh, this is so cool. I get to be part of this show just a little bit. And then when I got Flash Century, I'm like, oh, right. It's a bigger role in Equestria Girls. I'm excited. And then I read the internet and they hated the character. <laughs> like, Flash Century sucks. And I was like, this is not good. I'm going to my first convention. <laughs> <laughs> this is not good. But everyone was super sweet and very kind. There's no such Even thing though. as bad press. It's only, yeah. it's, it's true. You have to, it, yeah, you can turn every, every frown into a smile. Mm -hmm. This is true. You know yes. it. And well, the bronies are super sweet. So yeah, I, I, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, completely. And by the way, that was, that question was from Shy Fire. So thank you, Shy Fire. Thanks. And Shy this Fire. is another really sweet, it's not a question, it's just a statement. Lancer737 says, sending love to my fave cast of people from one of the most fave series ever. Thank you for all the joy you bring us in the world. Aw. Thank, thank you. you that is very, very, very sweet. That's super sweet beautiful okay cool um so speaking of conventions because we're all missing them on both sides of this live stream uh does anybody have any favorite memories from conventions silly anecdotes or specific uh places that you went to that were really fun i know we've all been to conventions i've been to conventions with everybody in this live stream uh, more than one um so yeah any any fave convention moments that you guys can remember rony con rony con the very first always rony con, con for sure I know uh, Nicole, you and Andrea, I think you guys were all the first one. I was yeah. invited, but I couldn't make it. Yeah. Uh, but my the memory that I have of the first BronyCom, outside of it being awesome, 
Um, Is I that just, in New Jersey, Kathy? The one when we went yeah. to New Jersey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was uh, in New well, one of the New Jersey's, I think. With the, with the crazy driver that would take our moms, right? With that one? Well. Whoa, <laughs> take my mom. Right, it was like jumping. Can like, you want me to share what, what we were saying in the cab? Uh, sure, if it's funny. If it's not, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll save that for a together, Nicole. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah, for the VIP I chat. Mean, I just couldn't believe it. that was the first one I'd been to. And I, so you were there. I, there wasn't there two New Jersey's at least. I think there might have been. So I don't know if you were the one. Were you at the one Nicole where there was a fire? Yeah. Okay, so that's the one I'm talking about. Yeah. When I first went to the the BronyCon, I could not believe the number of people, the number of Bronies that were there. I, I, it was it was blowing me away. Who are these people? Where did they come from? They were all walks of life, all talents. It was the most wonderful thing, um, you know, to have that happen and to to experience that. So I was really grateful for that. I'm thinking about the cab now. Let me just say, if it wasn't for our blessed Nicole, we may not have been there on time. <laughs> because we had yes. Because Nicole was like, what was the guy's name? Do you remember the cab driver's name? Oh. Really nice cab driver. But Nicole's like, oh, so you turn here. No, 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 don't go there. You gotta take this one. Yeah, go turn left. One. Just turn left. Just turn turn left. Yeah, okay, go straight. Yeah, yeah. go right. Can you right. Yeah, no, but Miss Nicole, no, go right. Oh, okay, I see, I see, good, keep going. Now where do I, turn left this and is turn it. right. And I think, was our moms with us too? So both our moms, I think, were sitting like this in the back seat. Just No, like, no, no, the moms were with us in the cab. Oh, they weren't. No, no, it was just you. That, was, that, that was the other New Jersey. That's what you right, see. Right, the other one. See, so I'm going wrong. Went to the Lodes Theater. Yeah, that was a totally different. I feel like this right, is right, a right. mini short in the making. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it oh, no, was, I love it. Yeah. I was in the cab. No, the other cab. No, the <laughs> other Jersey. No, the, <laughs> the first Jersey. Jersey. Anyway. Who's <laughs> <But that, laughs> on first? Um, there was I'm a cab. That's all that matters. There was a fire, but it was minimal. And I was like, this is really exciting. Nothing happened, everything was fine, but it was great to see all of you. We met all the original people back then who got this organized. And I just wanna say with that, thank you all the organizers and thank you all the fans and thank mm -hmm. you everybody who made it possible and held it up with us today. Thank you, we love you, that's all. Wonderful, does anyone have anything to add to that? That was a well-rounded statement. Kind of well. It really was. Man. I love, so one of the wonderful things about um, for me that I that I discovered was that there's so much uh, talent in the costume building department. There were people who would come in full team regalia. I need my charger. You know, like my computer, like almost like cyborg or massive robot mm -hmm. transformer version ponies. You oh know, yeah, like, yeah, 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 like, yeah! Those were amazing. And uh, you know who you are, you guys. They like, were amazing. And I just, like, so I just find that I just find that I'm kind of like starstruck when I go to conventions. I kind of I kind of marvel at like families mm -hmm. that put together full family costumes. Yeah. And um, some of my my favorite moments have been doing little like karaoke sing alongs in the kids' rooms and stuff like that because. Um, you really get to like, I, first of all, I get, I'm a mom. So I get to like, I get to sort of like host their kids for a bit and the parents get into it too. But I, I love, I love those, the fact that full families will come to a convention and really make, uh, make a big, a big event out of it and really just celebrate their children mm -hmm. and yeah. celebrate their, their interests and really just support them. And do you remember oh, that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> remember that? <laughs> Cosplay. Yeah. yeah I, even, we, I even got into a, my cosmic tights in there. Yeah. I was trying, nice. to, trying to rock a bit of sunset <laughs> up in there. Oh, or Charlie's oh, Angels nice. moment. That's fabulous. That's Juju, right? Juju's bomb. It's Juju, yeah. Amazing. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah, so, so many. And, and people will, like, change their costume, like, from one day to the next. And it's just, like, uh, that inspires me. So, and we, my family, we always always grew up where Halloween and costume making was, like, a big deal. So um, next time we go to, like, a convention, I think I'm going to bust up. Rebecca's going full out. But remember, yes. you got to, some of these people, they build in the air conditioning <laughs> machines in, because otherwise they, like, can't survive the weekend. I some know. of the costumes are so, so smart, having little fans going in. Yeah. Stuff. Um, hey, so sorry, guys. There's lots of uh, super chats here, and I want to get to as many of them as possible. So we'll try and start answering a little bit quicker, maybe overall, just so we can get to as many of you guys as possible. Mm -hmm. But I'm also saving them as well 
And I have an on off screen associate helping me uh, save them and keep track of them. I have a couple. So we're doing well. Uh, I've got another good question from Rainbow Dash, uh, who is my birthday twin. We realize Vincent, his name is also, well, you have a name twin, Vincent, and then you also have a birthday twin in me. My birthday is September 7th, and so is uh, Rainbow Dash, who was on the live stream last weekend. Uh, okay, so if you could visit one place in Equestria, what would it be? In the whole of the dimension, the whole of the world, what little, what area, like the castle or Ponyville or there's like the Crystal Kingdom. I would go Crystal Kingdom. That's my answer. The one with the, the crystals. <laughs> what else is there to say? The crystal one. I want to go to the tree that had all the stones. I want to go there. Oh, yeah. The oh, yeah. Harmony tree, perhaps? I, I think. Tree of, tree of Harmony. Tree yeah. of Harmony sounds better. Yep. <laughs> just add tree with the stones. stones i like Stone that tree <laughs> I, would, great. I would go camping in everfree forest for a while oh Ooh, that's a wow. good answer, good answer. i'd like good to answer, visit apple acres i think that'd be a nice orchard to go to well you're <laughs> welcome anytime there you go. i think one thing is that all of us actors here on the live stream and i think every act every voice actor that exists can do that you know, we can do the Southern accent. I think that's a standard. And There's I many different that. types of Southern. Are you from Tennessee? Are you from Georgia? Are you perhaps, you know, from Oklahoma? There's very different, very different Southern sounds. Yes. This isn't one Nashville. of them. Part of Vancouver. <laughs> southern yeah, part of Vancouver. It's pretty rough down there. Yeah. <laughs> Jonasy, my goodness. <laughs> rough. Okay. On, the, on the borders of Richmond? Just Ooh, the borders? Don't even say it. <laughs> by the outlet malls oh. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so oh drew says hello he just wanted to say that he misses us all and hopes that we're doing well so hi, drew. Drew. yeah and thank you again for all your help during our normal yeah. conventions you've been so yeah. unbelievable drew was awesome oh hope God. we'll see you again drew please yeah. please uh, well, this oh. is a this is an interesting question. I, I'll probably just answer this real quick on behalf of all of us. So, um, Twiggle says, "Are there any character auditions any of you tried out for that you really wanted but didn't end up getting all the time?" Well, us oh. actors oh. have <laughs> yes, go, every go single it, every single every single one of the main six ponies. In fact, <laughs> it also like so everybody who is in the first step. I'm I I getting back to like that first question. I auditioned for. Um, Applejack, Pinkie Pie, Fluttershy, uh, Rarity, um, Princess to uh, Celestia, uh, mid you know, uh, prin Princess Luna, or whatever, you know, like I, I auditioned for all of them. Spike, I auditioned for Spike. <laughs> like I got callbacks and I didn't get in. It was really hard. Aww. But it's okay, because I got, when I got Sunset Shimmer, I was like, yes! Because uh -huh. <laughs> she also gets to turn into a demon. <laughs> so that was cool. That's awesome. Look at well, you now. Flying and, away, flying. Dude, and that's know. the thing about acting in general, for those of you guys who, who are not familiar with the business side of things, it's always, you know, it's always a lottery, right? It's a lot of rejection and a lot of disappointments. Even when you book a role, there's still a chance something can fall through. Before the pandemic, I had an amazing uh, a role I was so excited about, an incredible new series. It was for Amazon. It was based on a amazing book i'd read it and got all the scripts and we were five days away from shooting and then of course a pandemic right so you got to be used to being flexible and and not get too attached but obviously still stay positive in our industry so yes the answer i think on behalf of all of us certainly certainly lots of characters we've auditioned for that we would hope that we have gotten but uh you know it's just uh it's sort of luck of the draw and also just when uh new opportunities come up you got to be positive and also not get too attached to them at the same time it's a balance and hey oh <laughs> What? Well, uh, Andrea, woo! You're in. She's not sure she is though. You're in there, like swimming. You're in. You're in. You're in. You're in. You're in. You're in. Yes. Yes. Okay. Hello. Where am I? You're on the bottom right. Where are you? Yeah. Where are you? You're in. Where am I? Where am I? Anyway. Hi, and Hi. How are you, Kathy? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I heard your voice uh, for an ad for Gatorade something or yes, fancy uh, water. Propel, propel. Yes, yes. I was like, what is Kathy telling me to do now? It's like, <laughs> so bossy. Drink some energy You're water. <laughs> It'll make you buff and... Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I got this. <laughs> Young. 
I know. You heard that, eh? Saw that TV commercial? Yeah. 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 I think always- I was watching CBC Gems and they played it every single. Mm-hmm. I was like, there she goes again. Yay. <laughs> Ching. Yay. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Actually, you mentioned that, Andrea, because I was watching a travel commercial the other day on TV because I'm a hockey nerd. I still am. And I've been watching all the Canadian playoff games. And I have heard this commercial before. And I was thinking, man, I, I know that I know that person. Then I realized it was Kathy. And I think that's the marker of all the great voice actors in this chat <laughs> is oftentimes <laughs> I'll hear something several times, even a character and go, yeah, no, it's definitely someone I know. But oh, gosh, it takes me five times or perhaps an IMDb search to to confirm it. So, yeah. Well, welcome, Andrea. We are very happy to have oh, you here. And I'm sure you'll have some uh, super chats. Feel free, to, guys, to put in some questions for Andrea now since she has joined us. I'm sure you guys have lots. And I'll go back to one of my questions because we're just rolling on here. Um, okay, this is kind of now to more of like the fun personal question about what we've been up to. So what has everyone's hobby been during quarantine? And has anyone had a binge watching show? Uh, I thought you were going to say binge watching habit. I'm currently, <laughs> I'm currently binge watching Designated Survivor. I'm a yeah. few years behind. Um, I just finished um, uh, 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 Flack on Amazon and uh, The Stand as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm all over the place. And I watched Army of the Dead two nights ago. I love zombies. <laughs> love zombie <laughs> culture. <laughs> I do. It's one of my favorite things in the universe. If I could be a zombie, my life would be complete, but not in real life, but if I could play one. So, um, yeah, so that's what I've been watching, binge watching. There you go. And any new habits during, um, well, Vince, I think you mentioned off you're doing 50 push ups a day. I'm doing 50 sit ups a day, trying to keep up with my uh, teenage peoples. And uh, I'm cooking more because I'm home more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I'm, I'm trying to do 10 push-ups a day. It's so hard. I keep forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, there goes another day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for example, I have not done them today. The <laughs> time. Now, days, yeah. now, Andrea, you the must time. do it now on the live stream. No, but now I have accountable. I can't uh, do that. You can. Do them now. I totally respect <laughs> I that. <laughs> Just, you can pretend you can like move your phone okay groovy anybody else some uh some hobbies binge watching shows real quick and then i've got lots tennis. of super chats tennis french tennis. open atps tennis tennis love it tennis. tennis rebecca what do you, what um, have you been I've, to? I've been gardening a lot i've been in my garden and, and like spreading things from seed i go look i will show you a little planty. These are going. These are going in the ground. And this is broccoli, everybody. Oh, <laughs> it looks like basil. Oh well, no, this is the basil. Oh no, she's got basil, basil somewhere oh, else. Worry. Oh yeah, this yeah. is the basil. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh no, that is basil for sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah. I mean, the first part of the pandemic was kind of like when we were in full on lockdown and there was nothing to do. I literally trim we have a couple of palm trees in, in our backyard yeah. and i and i trimmed off the fronds and i was like this is a lot of stuff like what should maybe i could make something out of it and so i li- i literally made some baskets out of the palm tree fronds oh, i can show you a basket too yeah. okay. here i go i'm getting one vince and andrea what have your hobbies been other than the push-ups uh, we know both of you do push-ups now true we do we, we one do of us does push-ups <laughs> and then the other one talks about it. Um, I, 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 I've been doing lots of rock climbing, which has been fun. Oh, you rock um, climb, Vince? I do too. Yeah. Nice. Bouldering? Do you, do you do bouldering? I used yeah, to. Yeah, man. Let's let's go bouldering sometime. Oh, absolutely. Socially I'm distance, like huge course, on it. But yeah. yes, let's, let's go. I oh, sick. It. Look, I make baskets. <laughs> oh, I want one. I want one. I love you. I want one. That's really good. I have really, literally had no idea what I was doing. I was just like, I guess this will, this is working. It's that working. is amazing. So I made a flat one because I wanted to make a flat one and I made a round one. I want a flat head? one. Yeah. I want a flat one. I'm putting my order in for a flat I'll one. Take the other one. Yeah, months later, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is you did it. You completed it. What's that? 
I said, the thing is you did it. You completed it. I'm impressed. Yeah, I have well, well that's it. The thing is, there's like no, there's absolutely no, um, the great thing about having a creative endeavor is that you have no attachment or to the end result. You know, mm. like for me, I, would ju I just like to explore tactile things and, and to be able to go like, well, it might not make me money one day, but I enjoy doing it. And it's super meditative for me. And I, it, mm. that's something that I, I enjoy. Awesome. Oh, nice. board games is another one that we've been going nuts over. My wife and I, we love board oh, yeah. games. We're big oh. on escape room board games here. That's that's oh, our thing. Yes. And and you like I said, Exit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Exit. Well, uh, unlock. Cut things up and, and yeah, yeah. Break the whole game. I love oh, it. Rocks my world, man. Okay, sorry guys. We're gonna have to like blast through. So many people have uh, gotten okay. some great super chats here. And uh, one here's awesome. I got uh, Jenny Delolion. <laughs> D-Y-L-Y-O-N. Okay, so a super chat on YouTube. I did not know this existed till last week when we did Gabe's live stream. It's basically people um, pay a tip to the live stream to get their question highlighted. So that's why oh. we prioritize the super chats because people have like kindly tipped to the stream otherwise it's like you know the chat's very hard to follow so i think youtube implemented that so on on live streams you can keep track of some people who really want their questions answered is it gen lion like dandelion no it's like gen d y l y o n so gen d d l y o n anyways uh the question is sorry for butchering your name thank you all for being here you are all great and this means so much that you can spend your weekends with us again Ditto. Also, what are the biggest lessons you all learned in your careers through MLP or your characters? Thanks again. Well, say I, again. What was the question again? I just again? say what that I lessons learned a lot learned. of beautiful, uh, just examples of humanity going to these conventions and seeing the generosity of the human spirit is just exudes from the Brony community and their friendship and support to each other. It's just, it's a beautiful thing that I love when people go like, you go to these Brody uh, conventions, that must be crazy. And I'm like, yeah, they're crazy awesome. And then I have a story to tell them and and an experience that hopefully can inspire them to, to become kinder, to be nicer, to be supportive because the community is just so beautiful. Nice answer. I um, to say that was and crazy. Andrea left because she hates <laughs> Uh, oh. What Vince said, if I was going to be deep and I'm going to be completely frivolous, I've learned how to better style my hair because Princess Celestia has the best mane around town. Hey! Uh, so true. Yes, I want queen. to still see yes. you color your hair that way. Rainbow, rainbow colors. Nicole? I did. I did do that for a, a convention. I had I had color pieces in. I did. Oh, next I did do that. I'll do it I next time. I time. learned through because my character went on a huge journey of redemption from being like a super evil character um, to really being broken down and having to rebuild uh, herself from from the ground up. She she really um, she was cha a challenge to play. Actually, we 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 spent a lot of time really finding um, even in the studio. Like the, the the character was written really beautifully, but it was also really challenging to not so, to to make her her transition a natural one and um and it was it was challenging like emotionally it was really challenging i was actually watching some of the equestria equestria girls shows uh with one of my kids and and i was getting a little emotional because i remember how like how deep some of these these the scripts are and they really get you they really get you feeling quite raw and quite open so um you know it's no wonder that that the fandom is so connected because we we go deep in these sessions. You know, we really we really pulled a, a lot of our ourselves and put a lot of ourselves into this. But I've found that there's been a lot of um, uh, wonderful redemption stories that I've I've been share I've shared. Uh, I mean, people have shared with me because they've felt that they were bullies in the past and have been working on coming back from that. And and yeah. we need to we need to make room for for the sunset shimmers of the world, right? Totally. So people can come back and, and be better, better humans because there's room for everybody to grow. So. And, yeah. and just to say that in a couple sentences with that, you know, the, the, the sort of power that we have, so to speak, the influence that we have as actors in something like this um, on so many levels, I think it's so evident through My Little Pony. And, you know, I think that's something that's been brought into focus that's important to consider all the time. 
Yeah. And hey, Andrea, I'll kind of gear this over to you now. So that question, I'm also going to tie in with another super chat. So first question is, what have you learned from MLP slash your characters? And then also, was there any storyline that you felt you would have loved to see Pinkie Pie or Fluttershy get into? Or did you feel like their stories wrapped up nicely? Uh, well, I think there's definitely always more adventures to be had. But I was... I felt so redeemed because we were invited to participate in the writer's room and we got to pitch our stories that we wanted to see. I really wanted to see Pinkie Pie in space. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> Help with Tabitha's suggestion. I mean, it's so great. I'm so happy. <laughs> Amazing. And this is a really nice super chat. Someone just says, no question, just an appreciation. Oh, just an appreciation of all of your talents. Thank you with a heart. So thank you. Very thank sweet. Some you. of these super chats are really, really sweet. Uh, okay, wait, I had a good one that just went by. I've got like seven windows open on my computer right now, guys. I feel like a tech mogul right I'm now. Yeah. Everybody give a big round of applause for Michelle yeah, for oh, oh, no. Thanks, guys. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here it is. Here it is. All right. This is a voice request, and this is kind of fun. So someone asks, can we please hear Pinkie Pie surprising Celestia with a box of cupcakes? What would that sound like? Here's a cupcake! Oh, thank you, dear, but I'm on a bit of a diet. But thank you. Are you sleeping? Here they are. Aren't you happy? happy? I'm... I am overjoyed, my little chipmunk. I mean, my little pony friend. <laughs> my little cupcake. My little cupcake. And then someone will go and animate it, and then it'll be a, a wonderful it'll be a thing. Short. It'll be a thing. It'll be a thing. Because <laughs> okay. I love cake. I do. Indeed. Indeed. Well, Celeste, uh, I, like, yeah. I like scotch, but I digress. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a dark chocolate person. Oh. That's That's my thing, and, you know. I uh, sometimes a go, day will go by and I'll have eaten an entire dark chocolate bar and I'll be like, oh, Kate, okay, well, that's good. No one saw that because it just never existed in the first place. <laughs> well, live yes. longer for it. You exactly. will live longer for it. Actually, antioxidants, people. Chocolate. Yeah, exactly, exactly, right? Dark chocolate, it's, it's fine, chocolate. it's fine, you know. Even 50% dark chocolate, that's high enough, question mark. <laughs> Just no salt. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we've got an interesting question here. This is more on the business side of voice acting. So since FIM, uh, Friendship is Magic, debuted, we've seen a shift from cable TV to over-the-top services or streaming services. How has this affected VO opportunities and the animation industry? This is a really interesting question. Sure. <laughs> uh, I can tell you, I think actually moving to the Netflix model has um, lessened some opportunities because I'll tell you why. It's no longer a series year by year delivery. They just ask for a certain amount and then Netflix can determine how they want to unroll it. So we could go do 40 episodes and work for six months and be really grateful for that. But then they could roll it out for the next three or four years. So as performers, they're benefiting. We're not, unless you can change the contract that's presented here every day. So that's just one thing. I mean, the work is great. It's all great. But that is something in terms of um, volume of opportunities for creative people to get their juices out there into the world and how it can be rolled out. So it used to be if you had a show and it got renewed for another season, they'd be like, OK, like with Pony. Right. We knew, OK, we're going to work for the next seven months. And then, oh, it's coming back. OK, get a couple of months off, kind of like film and TV work. And then you're back for the next seven months. Um, with Netflix and stuff, the deliveries are so different. The work consistency is different. There's a or even the point. amount of episodes it used to be 26 episodes per season. Now you got like, hey guys, we're back. Eight episodes, six yeah. episode seasons. You know, so it's all different now. Yeah. Or even one or big show, and we might cut it up. That's right. Yeah. Or five minute clips. Those. Yeah. Those yeah. are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Challenging. It's all changing. We used to have 52 episoders quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. 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 That was normal. Those were the days, my, my friend. friend. Yeah, my man, my man. There they go. <laughs> Long time ago. Uh, Andrew Hickenbottom says, no question, just an appreciation of all of your talents. Thank you, Red Heart. Aww. Again, yeah, they're all hey, very Andrew. sweet. Uh, Andrea, Nicole, would you voice your characters again if Hasbro have, have give, have, 
if Hasbro <laughs> have you the opportunity, if Hasbro gave you the opportunity, I think it's supposed to be gave. Uh, I would say probably you guys would say yes. We'd all, you know, do our voices again at any time. And sure, we, but I want to raise. Right? There, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Love to. Let's talk to my people. We'll make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. In a heartbeat. Um, totally. Okay, someone says for Rebecca, sunset and starlight starlight glimmer, sorry, are the starlight glimmer are the reason I decide to be a better person since I had to go through a redemption arc. I'm so happy I was able to meet you mm -hmm. at Vancouver Brony Can. Oh what's the what's the name? Uh that was Forrest da Silva. Hi Forrest. On his birth certificate. <laughs> Good to see you again. Okay. Oh, this is a great question. Um, Katie Bat says, how do you feel about LGBTQ plus fans identifying with and seeing themselves in your characters? Would you be open to playing LGBT characters yourselves? Absolutely, first of all. And um, I think all of us are really grateful when people connect with uh, any characters that we voiced, especially anybody that's experienced you know negativity towards being who they are in their normal life that's i think the highest honor <laughs> when you're able to be a part of a show or voice a character that's all about inclusivity and that's certainly what my little pony is all about so i know all of our voice actors very well and i know that they would all stand uh, behind my statement on that so definitely yeah. sure. cool okay uh, scrolling up scrolling down all righty. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I had a question for Kathy. I, I was just uh, this one, one of the ones I wrote down earlier. Um, would you like to tell everyone, because I get these questions a lot about, you know, vocal fatigue and maintaining safe voices when you have to do a consistent character. So uh, do you have any advice for beginner voice actors out there on how to find a voice that's sustainable, especially with someone like Spike? really raspy little boy voice what do you do to make sure that you're yeah creating a consistent and easy character to keep going with great question and i'll try to make it brief because there's a lot of pieces to that first of all a lot of people want to do all the character voices they possibly can so the new actor always wants to do everything it's really important to get good training with someone who can really assess you so that they can tell you biologically what is cap what you're capable of or what your range is like I used to think that I could do a boy voice way back when, when I was tr starting out, and pe and my friend said, no, that's a female crow. And, you know, so you need somebody to tell you honestly what you, what you can and can't do. You don't want to strain your voice because if you try to do too many of those characters, you will strain that and it will not sustain and they'll just find an actor that can actually sound like that in real life. Um, I wouldn't uh, drink coffee, although I do all the time in the session, uh, or anything too cold or anything too gummy like milk because that's going to muck up your sound. Um, and don't forget the natural voice as an actual character. So a lot of people think that cartoon or animation requires all the crazy cartoony stuff all the time and, and, and not your own natural voice. So I would highly recommend considering that because if you don't do cartoony voices, you've got your own natural voice, which can be animated. So those are a few quick tips. But this is my natural voice. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you know what, Garble? I knew you would have to say something. I knew. Yeah, whatever, say. Spike. 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 I challenge you to an ogres and obli an ogres and oubliettes, and I can't even say it. You can't even say it. Mm -hmm. I can. I can't spell it. Whatever. Yeah, if you want to meet? Let's meet on the bridge. Uh, coffee. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Coffee. I need coffee. Well, so do I. I. I, I put it in there because that's what I do, but it dries <laughs> out. <laughs> coffee, water, coffee, water, wine. As long as you balance oh, it. Oh, oh, water, coffee, what was water, that? Wine. What was, oh, well, wine. Oh, okay. All right. Just throw, remember, just like threw that in there. <laughs> Cheryl, I want to say another thing is that, yeah. that all the actors here, I'm sure, have experienced what I've experienced, but all, like, I've done so many little characters and boy voices that have required you to scream and yell constantly. For episode after episode and if you do adr as well as prelay so adr is animated dialogue replacement audio digital reproduction basically means you're doing dubbing lip syncing to a picture you mm -hmm. can have a ton of episodes and they can be a character that is yelling and screaming all the screaming all the time so just know you're going to be tired know that that's going to be a little bit more taxing than if you were in a group scenario say in a prelay where you get to sit down and relax a bit that's a bit taxing yeah. we still do it but it does try you so I would not be, you know, drinking a ton of milk or. Yeah. <laughs> Get some good rest. Totally. Have a good sleep. 
I have a voice question then also for Vincent. So you obviously, when you listed all your characters at the beginning, I didn't even know that there was so many different ones there. Uh, so mm -hmm. what's your advice to people who, because a lot of people don't know that when we're cast in shows, they want to try and double cast voice actors for various roles so they can bring in the same voice actor for multiple purposes. And you've done that a lot in your career and also in My Little Pony. So uh, how do you disting distinguish all your voices and, and what's your advice for that? And Vince just did four different voices for me the other day, didn't you, Vince? <laughs> there you go. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think you just have to come in with like a, a little toolkit of 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 different voices. You just have to pack it all in there and kind of remember it. And and um, I think if you are in a session and there is an incidental character or whatnot, just be prepared to have something in your back pocket all the time that someone has never heard, or just something that you really enjoy. It might be totally ridiculous. And this is something that I've done before. Well, you know, I just come in and be like, yeah, I'm gonna do this voice for this guy. Totally inappropriate, but they're like, oh, hey, remember last week you did that voice? I'm like, oh, you mean this one? Oh, I'm not sure I could do that again. You know, <laughs> to, like, accept these ideas. It's a little game you got to play. But yeah. to have like that, that arsenal in your, in your back pocket is a, is a, it'll, it'll only behoove your, your experience in the, in but the just, it's be, but what? Be behoove. Behoove. Oh, behoove. Nice. Love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Okay, someone says thank you on I should stop saying someone. Uh Jen de la Lion, the one that uh, asked a question before, says thank you for answering my previous question and special shout out to Rebecca for getting my name right. Oh, oh it is it is. It's Jen de Lion, <laughs> like oh, Dandelion. Oh, that's what you meant. Oh, that makes so much more sense, Rebecca. Okay, you come here and do this. That makes more sense. <laughs> Okay, cool. Uh, they said also, what's a fun activity slash hobby that Starlight and Sunset would enjoy doing together? We didn't see much of that. Um, Sunset Shimmer might um, teach Starlight Glimmer how to roll sushi. Oh, wow. That's, that's specific. Really? I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you know Sunset Shimmer has r runs the sushi cart? She ran a sushi cart. Really? Oh, oh. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Someone read the script. I like it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's. I think it's just like like sometimes it's like the background art. There was a toy where there was a toy where the Sunset Shimmer had her own little sushi cart, and it's oh, it's, oh my adorable. gosh, I love it. And I'm like you, and I'm, and I'm like who's who at Hasbro spying on me because I used to be obsessed with sushi. I mean, I still am. I love sushi, and yeah. so to like. It's so funny that like all of a sudden this, this character trait in myself is like in a tall a toy. It's like it's a it's a it's a toy. It's a it's a food cart. Yeah, like a little stand. That's crazy. Wow, it's I missed that. So awesome. Oh, I really uh, okay. I, I, did look not, this. I, like I did it. not know there was sushi in My Little Pony. That makes me happy. That's well, like there's, there's a little wait, bit of Vancouver for you. A quest your girls because I don't think oh, I think ponies okay. mostly eat apples and stuff. Right. Well, oh, that and makes salad. sense in the in the real world. Okay. Oh, yes. good. I understand. And cupcakes. Oh. <laughs> oh my god yeah isn't it cute oh my word you have that rebecca you should what? get that you what? gotta get that I, really, I should get that i think it would be a really cute toy to have <laughs> I'm like uh, Nicole. can we just can we just everybody look at nicole for a second while she's reacting to the sushi <laughs> card <laughs> okay i'm like what is this thing <laughs> uh for Forever Free Brony asks, hey, was Pinky's in space moment we chatted about earlier inspired by anything? I've always been curious about that. What was it inspired by, Andrea? Coffee. Nothing. Yeah, coffee. It was just <laughs> my after at something we thought. She's just so wacky. She's so out there. There's so many things that she has done. She's always doing what you wouldn't expect. And she's cosmic. She just pop up in space because she can do anything. So why not? She love lives it. Dimension. I don't think yeah I don't think you really need a reason to put Pinkie Pie in space that just like makes exactly. sense yeah every, totally. yeah <laughs> completely I have a question it. the other part that's funny is is that they really didn't want to do it Kathy <laughs> 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 and I just kept like I was like they're like well what else and I was like nope nope this is this is what I want <laughs> and I just kept <laughs> and they were like oh that's good oh, yeah to animate it just really doesn't fit with our plot and i was like nope That's we're just okay. <laughs> as make it so it persistence it made, it made tabitha's heist idea just seem so benign 
compared to that. <laughs> oh, that was a great idea. Now, yeah, what would have been good, perhaps, is a space heist. Then you could put mm. the two together, there a pink go. heist, yeah. space heist. There you yeah. go. There you go. Hey, Michelle, we're just yeah. we're coming up almost to the top of the hour. Mm-hmm. Can we just remind everybody, or maybe I, I'll just be bossy and do so. We're all keeping, if you're interested, we love talking with you all, but um, all of our stores on Streamly will be open until tomorrow. If you are looking to purchase a gift for someone or for yourself and want us to sign it, um, I know I'll be looking up to about tomorrow night and then I'm going to be closing my store. So head on over to streamly.com slash my little pony, if that's of interest to you and, um, yeah. And the stores will be open until tomorrow. Yeah. That's I'm, a- even, I'm doing another live stream tomorrow too on Instagram. Ooh. Oh, nice. I'm going to do Good. another signing cause I had so much fun and I messed up my first one by playing pony music in the background. So <laughs> come and join me awesome. while I try this again. I thought you were going to say Peter Newkin one. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Love Peter. That yeah, was great. all of the um, all of the Streamly links. I put the big group Streamly page in the uh, description of this video, the YouTube live stream, and also all of our individual pages below that. So oh, awesome. uh, yeah, Rebecca's doing another live stream tomorrow. I'm actually gonna once I say goodbye to you guys on Zoom later. I'm going to just continue this live stream on my channel. I had a couple more I had to sign that came in in the week, and my store closes tomorrow as well. So I'm gonna uh, sign those for the people that were still waiting for theirs. And does anyone else have any signing sessions that people should know about? Okay. I do another one. Maybe soon. Then I might do another one, but okay. okay. Stay tuned. Cool. And then, yeah, I'll also put everyone's social media links in the YouTube description. I didn't do that yesterday, but I'll do it uh, now so people can go and keep uh, keep track of everybody. And I'm sure if, yeah, Andrea or anyone else decides to do another live stream, uh, they'll post the information on there. Uh, cool. Okay. Well, guys, uh, there's a couple more super chats. I wouldn't mind getting through people. Well, this one uh, person is a fifty dollars super chat. There's so many. Uh, it's so What's hard to keep track of. Um, but we'll do maybe a couple more. Can we go five minutes over? If anybody needs to leave, feel free. Uh, but yeah, just a couple more to get through. So, um, Solas Chastor- Ch- Chastra. Chastra. Chaostra, dang it! Why do you got? Why are you guys so much Maybe. better? At th- it, my problem, guys, is that I'm a really bad speller because I want everything to be phonetic. I'm very ear based, mm-hmm. so I'm really bad at spelling, and I always I read things exactly how like I think phonetically they should be said, and then I don't look at the whole word like you guys have. So yes, Zala's <laughs> Chaostra. What's one moment where one of your coworkers made you break out laughing in session? Uh, when there. Tabitha farts? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> All the time. Obviously, oh. Peter and I did the uh, the Valentine's Day episode of Cheerly and Big Mac. That was almost impossible to get through. <laughs> almost impossible to get through. Not going to lie. Only <laughs> his orthotics, but not his shoes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just working with, with Tabitha, with Luna and Ch- uh, Celestia stuff. Some of those. Oh, my God. Yeah. There was, I, I, I remembered actually, cause I was watching with, um, with my kid the other day, Forgotten Friendship. And mm-hmm. I remember watching Andrea trying to emanate, like um, emulate using, or she was using a straw to try to sound like she had a scuba, her scoop. So they ended up not using that, but she was talking to a straw to try to get, and so she's like, can you film this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> her austerity. I have a picture of Andrea going, <laughs> It was so funny, and it's just like the stuff—the stuff we're willing to try out. <laughs> we're, we're actors. I can always, I can always sing a Christmas carol again. No, Kathy. Yeah, I can. In the middle of the no. song. No, no, I could, I could. Really. Or Kathy, remember our song? We would sing all the time together. No, also no. Don't you remember that? Or shut up, I'll pound ya. Don't you remember the no. Marine, Marine, Marine Land Niagara? There you go. You're welcome. There's that earworm back. You're welcome, Andrea. She's like, I hate you. I just got that in my head from the last time. You know what? I have a good, there was a, a very, very brief story. One time, Peter knew ate a burrito bowl before he came in, and his no. stomach was actually audible in everybody's microphone. And we had this, I think it was like maybe the sisterhood episode, or like we had lots of lines together, and it was just impossible to get through. It's quite literally like Adam's turning off, like he's Peter. muting his mic, but my mic on the Peter. other side of the semicircle is picking it up. I'm <laughs> like, Peter. Oh. 
So his stomach, you, like you're specifically his stomach. Yes, Beans. it was gurgling. Yes, yeah, Beans. don't worry. Beans. Beans. Stomach. <laughs> Beans. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I'll do a couple more here. Someone says, Kier Thomas, by the way, Kier Thomas says, Hi, it was great seeing you all here. Just showing my love for you all. Another very positive one. We really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, okay, scrolling through. Oh, you guys, I'm so sorry for everyone, all, the, all the other questions uh, in the chat. But again, uh, any questions that you guys have for anybody after this panel, I'll put everybody's social media links in the description and feel free to interact with everybody on there because I know everyone has uh, Twitter and also Instagram. Uh, so yeah. Okay, cool. Let me see. Hope you all do more live streams in the future. Well, I hope that we maybe can go to do some conventions at some point again as well, because that would there be fun. There was one question from Brony Coaster. Yep. I think. Oh, uh, yes. Which is your favorite coaster? Um, Andrea and I was just telling this story to my dad because we went on the Mind Bender in West Edmonton Mall. Do you remember that? We went yeah, to how Edmonton. That? Michelle, you were there too. I wanted yeah. to go to the water park, but you went to the water park already. So then I convinced Andrea to go on this roller coaster, this super old roller coaster that I think some people have died on. Um, and she, <laughs> I, I was that, Andrea, afterwards? And she's like, my neck. I'm like, oh, was it the 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 loop? She's like, yeah, I couldn't get my neck up. And then, and then she like slammed her head. It was pretty bad. It was really bad. And then it turns out it's like a known thing on this roller coaster. <laughs> like whiplash from the yeah. roller coaster. Oh gosh. Whoops. They need have- like a head brace. Yeah. That's like our wooden roller coaster at the PE. It was that in my Socials my 11 textbook. There were World One soldiers training on Hastings Park's field in front of that wooden roller coaster, and it really? hasn't changed. And you're that, all going like, to die. Like, it's my, gonna die. Like, it's that's my favorite. That's, that's my favorite. My, it's my favorite. I hate it. I, I'm I know, terrified me too. of it. It's, my it's favorite. called the coaster, it's and it's so old. It's a wooden roller coaster, and it has the same bar since like 1954. If you don't hang on, you literally will. Going like stand so you stand up. up you you end up standing up out of your seat a little bit yeah i like how we've all had this experience this is like a very <laughs> yeah. common vancouver yeah. experience to have been yeah. on that I've roller that, coaster that ride with the chains you know the chains like there's a bunch of chains and seats. The swing the swing oh that's a great one. Oh, it's got chains and a seat and it just goes in circles i was on yeah oh, yes, oh, yeah. yeah. yes i know the one yeah. I, I forced Claire Corlett on that ride. She was terrified to go, and I and I she's not uh, not a fan of heights, but I got her on that ride at the E. But yeah, okay, guys. Uh, well, I'll just ask one more question. Did, and this one's from me. Does anyone have any future or probably more current projects that they want to talk about, or things that uh, would be fun for you guys to share? A lot of future stuff. When people ask, like, what are future projects? A lot of it we can't talk about, especially for right. new um, shows. So what's like that's- some i just can't i don't know i never know what's allowed and not so i just say Fair. nothing my mm-hmm. motto True. i i joined i joined the drew universe uh nancy drew on cw i play ace's mom so and we're coming back to start filming our third season in july so wicked you can uh, look for me there um and yeah stuff i can't talk about anything but it's exciting oh uh lego marvel avengers there we yeah, go I can talk and, about that. Uh, and fun there Black Widow. Go. yeah and i and i get to play captain marvel in that which is yeah. exciting i Easy. heard you guys i heard it what's that gigantosaurus and a few other things i can't talk about but yeah yeah, yeah. nice Thanks. awesomeness well, well i'm directing guys. directing lit i can't talk about what i'm directing though but i'm directing Sure. If I give you a and we can't tell you if we've been directed by Nicole or not either. There's sure you can. Yeah. Sure you can. Nicole is a wonderful director. She's Aww. an actor's director. <sighs> well, you're you're all amazing. You're all amazing. Make it easy. Make it easy. Hey Vince, any any last uh, any last thing from you? Um honestly, there's some really, really cool stuff happening. And I wish I could talk about it, but hopefully the next year we'll see. Yeah, I'll let y'all know. Thank Awesomeness. you. Andrea? Well, you said no, you, know, you could not talk about it. That's always just the good answer, right? Just, you know, you'll find me. You'll find me. You'll find the shows. <laughs> you always, you can find Andrea Libman everywhere. Let's be honest. It's That's truth. all good. It's all Stay good. Tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. I want to know what book you're reading, Andrea. Oh, right now? Yeah. Uh, Other I mean, than the Gruffalo on repeat to your child, what else? 
I'm reading so many books, but I'm reading a novella called A Taste of Honey that was a Hugo Award winner. I'm halfway through, so I'll let you know if it's good or not. Beautiful. I'm going to text you, Andrea. I just finished a really bad Grisham book, so I'm going to need some recommendations. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Aaron Matthews and I will find something. I know, right? Yeah. Awesomeness. Thank okay, you, Michelle. Well, oh gosh, yeah. guys, my pleasure. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Thanks, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah. This has been fun. No, this Thanks. has been oh well, no, my pleasure, you guys. And again, it's always just uh an honor and such a fun time to be in the same room or at least virtual room as you guys. And I hope to see you all soon and hug you because I miss you all. Yes, please. Yeah, be good. Let's act together. Wouldn't that be grand? That would be oh, just yeah. fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Virtual uh, hugs. Yes. For that the symbol? I don't know. I'm just doing it. <laughs> That's like kind of like Wakanda <laughs> forever. Language. <laughs> like, this. like this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Emoji awesome. face, but hands. Oh, out yeah, one. that one. That one's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> well to figure that one out like what i care yeah. somebody's somebody's gonna screenshot that one you guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah my pleasure you guys well thank you for joining us everyone and thank again you, just because i had a couple more uh signings that i didn't get to last weekend i'm gonna like hop off the the stream for like five minutes and then go set up upstairs so feel free to stay on i'll be back uh shortly and yeah thank you again everyone here and everyone in the audience this was really really fun Yes. Bye. Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Hope to see Bye. You again soon. Hi guys, I'm just gonna transition uh, to this scene for a second <laughs> to tell you all what I'm gonna do. Uh, also, there were so many super chats, I'm so sorry, I tried to keep track of them as much as possible, uh, but also six of us in a panel and so many amazing super chats. I'm gonna try and answer as many of them as I can. I know there were some that I probably missed that were specifically for uh, one of the other voice actors, but I'll try and get through them as many as I can. Um, but just give me a second, I'm gonna transition upstairs, or maybe I'll answer some questions first and then then go upstairs because I don't want anyone to leave without having their uh, question answered. So let me go back to all of my screenshots. I have so many super chat screenshots. Bum -ba -bum. First of all, yeah, okay, you guys can hear me, right? Probably, hopefully. <laughs> uh, okay. You might be coming in through my Mac now. I'll probably take this off. Woohoo. Okay, so who do we have here? Bum -ba -bum. Wow. Now I'm at the top. I'm going to start from the beginning. Peridaniel says, do you guys have head cannons for your character slash things you would make canon about them if you could? Can you remind me what canon is? For some reason, I don't remember what canon means. I think it's like, so, like, uh, like, for, like subtext, like mind. What is, what is canon? Seriously, I, what, uh, you don't know? Okay, I'll go back to that question. Um, I've, it was for Rebecca. How is Albert Edgar doing? I don't know who Albert Edgar is, but I hope he's doing fabulously. And then we've got that we answered that question. Yep, yep, yep. Love it. Uh, Dinky Universe, what are your thoughts on Derpy and Dinky Hooves? Um, I think great. I'm not probably the most educated on Dinky and Derby, but I would say sure. Uh, and Wolf says, okay. How did you feel when G4 ended? Well, I felt like it was the right time. I think all of us did. And, you know, all shows gotta end, so I think uh, I think all of us were pretty happy, and especially the Cutie Mark Crusaders. I think that was all wrapped up really nicely. We got our Cutie Marks, and it helped everyone else out. So, yeah, bum ba bum. Cannon is when someone invents a piece of fanon that they believe in. So it's oh, okay. So it's like kind of your idea for a character, like your your mindset around. Okay, that's what I thought. I just wasn't sure in that context if I was right. So I would say for Apple Bloom, it's weird because I, as much as I, I loved voicing her and I never, and you know, I never had any complaints. I really love Apple Bloom and I loved being her voice, but I also feel like her and I are completely different in like every single way. So I was never in this particular role one to get into her mind. It was more just her attitude and her uh, outward outwardly positivity and then sometimes her sulking. Apple Bloom kind of sulked sometimes. Uh, it was more the external things that I connected with with her and her energy and feeding off of being friends with Maddie and Claire in the room. We'd always have lots of fun as the Cutie Mark Crusaders. So 
nothing really internal going on. Uh, but yeah, always, always really enjoyed being Apple Bloom. And okay, cool. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Yes, hello, Drew. Good. Uh, yep, answered that. Mm-hmm. Nicole was asked, what would Celestia do for a living if she was never a princess? It's a good question. Um, I would say Celestia, I, I think she should become a hairdresser because her hair is breathing. It's so fabulous. It's quite, you know, it's literally, it's, you know, it's moving in the wind without any wind. So she's got to have some magical hair powers. And so she needs to be a hairdresser. 100%. Um, okay. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, fave roller coaster. The wooden roller coaster in Vancouver is whacked, but also my fave would probably just be Incredicoaster in Disneyland. Cause I mean, you can't beat it. They this the smellicizers, the cookie smellicizers, <sighs> fantastic. I miss Disneyland so much, and I want to go to Avengers Campus badly. That is a current dream when the border reopens. <laughs> mhm. Mm yes. Good answered. What are your opinions on mares? Mares are female ponies? Yes, so I think good. I would hope, because I am one. So good. What are your opinions of the OCs the fandom creates? I love the one that, actually, I brought it because I, I brought down a container of, of, of some of my favorite artwork to put on display for the panel. And this one is just sitting near me here. Uh, this was the OC that the fandom created for me. This is like the Michelle Kreber OC. And it's really cute. It's kind of like an Apple Bloom's color scheme. And uh, with the with the blue bow. If I were Apple Bloom, I'm not a big pink person. Despite this shirt, actually. This shirt says otherwise. But I'm, I'm a blue color scheme person for the most part. So yeah, love that OC. Okay, still getting through them. Ba -ba -dum. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sure. Thank you very much. Okay. Andrea Fluttershy was never the focus of any EG special. What do you think of that? And why do you imagine that being like? E oh, Questria Girl special. Ah, uh, I'm not sure. But Andrea was obviously involved in a lot of the... Like, the main six were really involved in the process on the other side of things. Kind of halfway through the show. Uh, it was like season five, season six. So I'm sure that, uh, you know, Andrea had... Quite, actually, quite a bit of creative input. That's the cool thing when shows get more and more, um, you know, not, not necessarily popular, but the more they go on and the more you build relationships with the people on the other side of the glass, uh, you do have potentially some creative suggestion, at least. Not necessarily uh, actual, you know, power, but uh, just some influence. So maybe tweet that to Andrea. Okay. Was there anything that you wanted to happen to your characters in the final, but didn't? No, I was really happy about Apple Bloom's finale. I think all the CMCs were. And, you know, she got her, they got their cutie marks. They, they, they could have been good in like season five. <laughs> season five, right? Season, I think it was season five. Um, and yeah, it was cool to have that grown up episode in the last season. I thought that was a really good wrapping up of the story. To see them as like older, older ponies. Uh huh. Uh, oh yes, Quinton Jones. Sorry, question for Nicole. What was your reaction when you saw your evil counterpart Daybreaker? I missed that one. Feel free to tweet it to Nicole. She's pretty good at responding on there. And Katie, but yet yeah, we answered that one. Yes, of course. I just want yes. Can't, yep, got it. Mm hmm. Boom, guys. I have fifty windows open, and I'm still going. Yes. Love from a U.S. Army soldier. Oh, thank you for your service for America. I'm Canadian, uh, but also big... Uh, I, I'm, I'm basically <laughs> basically dual citizenship mentally. And then maybe after the pandemic, uh, get, my, get my green card. I, a lot of my career and a lot of my friends are in the States. So, you know, we're very connected, as, as you guys know. Canada and the States... Which MLP episode did you have the most fun working on? Oh, well, that Peter knew eating a burrito bowl beforehand was uh, pretty special. That was quite memorable. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think... Oh, gosh. Um, probably the episode... Like, it's really one of the early ones, but the episode with the Cutie Mark Crusaders theme song... They're like, we are the cutie Mark Crusaders on a quest to find out who we are. And we will never 
because that whole session, poor Maddie, we did it together. And she had to scream the whole thing. And I felt so bad. We were both like just laughing the whole time, though, because she's standing there like five feet away from the mud. We are the QA, Mark. It was absolutely uh, a gong show, but it was really fun. And um, Daniel Ingram is, is a really good friend and colleague. And um, I just always loved the musical episodes because we worked together a lot. And uh, he would just create so many great songs. But that was a fun one. That, that one stands out in my memory. Uh, what do you think? Oh, this is from Dark Summoner 2. Question for Michelle Kreber. That's me. Uh, what do you think are the relations between the CMC and the background foals of Ponyville? Do you think they all hang? I would assume so. I mean, I hope the CMCs are inclusive in their group. And they seem to know a lot of the young ponies. So I would say, yes, good relationship. They want to help everybody find their cutie marks. And everyone who does have their cutie marks help uh, bring their passions into fruition. Oh, do you recommend me break out laughing? Yeah, Peter New always cracking me up. Or Tabitha. Tabitha is just like the best person to be in a session with ever. Mm. Okay. Oh, did I do it? I think I did. Guys, I might have done it. Hold on. Did I do it? I might have. Oh, I think I got through it all. Brilliant. Okay, well, you guys, I'm not going to go anywhere except I'm going to put a little image up, a little app bloom image up while I go to my signing setup upstairs where my little table with all my signatures are. So uh, feel free to join us for that, guys. It's not going to be too long. I've just got a couple to catch up from uh, last weekend. And yeah, if you still want to get anything signed by me or any of the other cast members uh, before the end of s this weekend, so tomorrow night, our Streamly pages are still open in the description, uh, but also, you know, my live stream or anyone else's live stream, this is all new, so we're it's been very interesting and, and really fun. But as always, uh, no need to, you know, purchase anything to participate whatsoever but thank you to everyone who uh has bought a print all the all the amazing new uh, graphic design that pixel kitties did i heard she got her tonsil stone no not tonsil stones wisdom teeth wisdom teeth removed um this week so sending love to them and uh yeah the great she's just an amazing did i wait do i have one here hold on i'll show you guys the new one she did she's really really talented yeah here we go this is the new one. I love it. There's like little apple bloom balloons, little apple thing. This is, I hate trying to hold something up to the camera because it mirrors, so it feels very unnatural. But anyways, yeah, uh, it's a beautiful new print by Pixel Kitties and sending love out to them on their awful week. But also, I really enjoyed getting my wisdom teeth removed because I got laughing gas and it was hilarious. I mean, I didn't enjoy the process of it but the video I got afterwards because Gabe or Black Griffin was there to to film me the whole time and so was mom and he had gotten his wisdom teeth removed the exact same way as me at my dentist like a couple months before and he was hilarious so I was like so stoked to get my wisdom teeth removed um because I don't ever do any substances I don't even drink coffee this is this is natural energy folks Met, you know, festered over the years, it's just me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, being under the influence of laughing gas just made me absolutely whacked. And it was pretty funny to watch afterwards. So anyways, uh, yeah, thank you to Pixel Kitties for the new designs for all of us. And yeah, okay, also, that's kind of it. Yes. <laughs> um, my brain is is fuddled now. It's I'm glad it stopped raining. It was like pouring rain before and it was really loud. Okay. Glad I got to all the super chats. Now I don't have to worry about talking so fast to make sure I get to everyone. I can, I can slow it down now. Uh, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be back in 30 seconds. I'm just going to um, transfer myself upstairs and I don't think anyone really wants me to, wants to watch me like hodl up the stairs. So I'll be back in a second. And yeah, I think if I just, actually I can keep talking to you. I'm gonna, ah oh man, I'm like an OBS mogul now. Hold on, if I'm gonna, I can give you an image. I can do anything on OBS. I'm a master at this point. I'm really not I'm doing my best guys. Okay, yes. 
Alright. There we go. A graphic. So that you can look at something pretty while I'm gone for a time being. Okay. I'll be back in a moment. And yes. Oh, wait. No, I just... <laughs> I did the exact opposite of what I was going to do. Okay. All right. See you guys in a sec. All right, I am back. If you guys could hear me that whole time, sorry. Uh, but I think. Also, yeah, I'll, I'll admit, look at my Zoom look, guys. I'm going <laughs> to reveal myself. I'm wearing, <laughs> I'm wearing Adidas pants and my, my nice outfit on top. But isn't that just the way, right? That's, that's what we got to do these days. If I sound far away, let me know. I can bring up my USB mic that I had downstairs. But uh, this will be OK. OK, great. Let's do this. Uh, Let's do this thing. Okay, mom's getting it uh, opened up there. But uh, yeah, tree hugger. I forgot that was a character that existed. That's a funny one. Is everyone talking about their favorite characters? Oh yes, favorite pony. Uh, my favorite pony, probably, probably Rainbow Dash or Pinkie Pie. Or I used to say, I used to say the alligator. I used to say Gummy when people would ask me what my favorite character is, just to be ironic just to be funny. <laughs> okay, cool. So, Cody Wells, you are up first. Cody, hello again. You ordered the wonderful Pixel Kitties new graphic there. And I'm going to number it first because I'm not going to forget again. Number everything before I go at it. Okay, beautiful. Just to be ironic. It's like speech jammer. <laughs> Okay, actually, it's not a bad delay at all. Sometimes the live stream delays are like a minute. That's like a couple seconds. Okay, specific request from Cody. They said bottom right corner. Got it, bottom right. Also have everyone write something she would say for motivation. Okay, beautiful. All right. Hey, Cody. Exclamation point. Keep on rocking. And that's from AB and also me, Michelle Kreber. There you go, Cody, bottom right like you requested. Keep on rocking. Thought that was the right motivational quote for this photograph, which is very rocking. So keep on rocking, Cody. And uh, thank you for the print request. Okay. Oh, I just saw someone ask me if I'm a sports fan. Oh yeah, you guys, uh, I'm a fan of all the sports and all the sports are all called hockey. <laughs> I, I'm a huge hockey nerd, huge hockey nerd. So, you know, my, my Canucks here in Vancouver, we're having a real tough time, but I'll cheer for all the Canadian teams. So it's all good. All right. Thank you, Cody, so much. And next up we have Josh who asked for this old lovely thing that black griffin actually designed many years ago this is one of my favorites because apple bloom is kind of doing the michael jackson thing with sweetie bell singing behind her there so yes josh okay sign this as yourself and apple bloom please of course i can josh my pleasure all righty hey oh yeah okay oh no i didn't number that's all why am i what did I miss? I missed the stupid number again. Okay. There we go. I should have a big sign here that says, number it. 
Okay, yes. Shush. Sending. From both A, B, and me. Michelle! Kribeach! There we go. He said to ask, he said to, uh, Request a uh, hello from both me and Apple Bloom. So I said, hey, Josh, sending love from both AB and me. And I always draw a little apple. So there you go. Shrill Cleaver, boom, chakalaka. I numbered it even. Look at me go. Phenomenal. Thank you. Off-screen associate. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Stole that from Gabe. Off-screen associate. All righty, beautiful. And... Uh, well, the number of, oh yeah, I didn't even think of that. Okay, good point. I forgot you said that last time. I'm gonna number this one before I forget. Oh, well that's smart, using a thin one. True. True off-screen associate who no one knows who you are. <laughs> except everyone knows who you are. Say hi, mom. Hey, mom. Oh, well that's, <laughs> well that's like a me joke. That's a, that's a bad joke there, Maniqua. That's a, that's a Michelle joke. Um, <laughs> oh, another super chat. Okay, hello. And also, guys, I don't know how many of you have uh, been to my channel before, so welcome. Uh, it's obviously mostly a music channel. I'm mainly a singer-songwriter, and uh, all my music videos and, and lyric videos and stuff are up here, but sometimes I do vlogs, and sometimes we still do fun pony stuff, so yeah, subscribe if you have not subscribed, and uh, nice, to, nice to have you guys here. It's... Uh, Stanley Cup. Oh gosh, who's my pick to win the Stanley Cup? Certainly Avalanche, like no doubt. I think Colorado is going to easily do it. I just don't see them losing. Like they're not going to lose to Vegas. They're not. Who would they lose to? Uh, I mean, maybe that's me jinxing it, but I think, I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry you're a Panthers fan. They did well, but they, they couldn't beat Tampa. So that's unfortunate. Alrighty, my friend wants me to ask you, this is a super chat from Arctic Crown Productions. Could you say, well, howdy, Chad. I can't wait to hang out at the clubhouse. I'm glad you're here in Ponyville. In Apple Bloom's voice. No, I can't, Chad. I can't. I can't say that in Apple Bloom's voice. <laughs> Except I just did. Apparently the last stream's laggy. Oh, the last stream's laggy. Well, that's because I had my Ethernet cable downstairs, and now I'm yeah, on my so actual um, Wi-Fi. Let's see if we can fix that, guys. I might glitch for a second. I'm going to hold on. Uh, okay. Why don't you stop uh, streaming it, Mom? Yeah. Okay, I'm just switching to my other Wi-Fi. It'll go dark for a second. And hopefully this will be better. I just connected to the new Wi-Fi. Sorry about the lag, guys. Camille, I, I always love your support, my friend. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> and Pegasica, thank you, guys. You, are, you two are, are absolutely just the sweetest. <laughs> I just love when you're spontaneously going into your app one voice. Well, the thing is, I've been doing the voice for so long that I can switch in and out of it so easily. You'd never even know when I'm out of it or not. <laughs> Brilliant. All right. Got to go on to Hap's order. Okay. Oh, I already labeled it. Look at that. Look at me go. Whew. Okay. Hap. Oh, no. This is, this is a silver Sharpie. We don't want that. We want nice black Sharpie. Okay. Hap. Beautiful. Oh, I'm going to go on the top right. Hey, Hap. Aren't you gonna stay for brunch? Question mark? A, B. That's me, little apple. All righty then. Good, good stuff. Yeah. Hey, Hap, aren't you going to stay for brunch? Maybe. And that's me. Boom, chakalaka. Thank you, Hap. There you are, off-screen associate. Complete. And hey, guys, I know I asked everyone else this question in the live stream, and then I, I forgot to kind of answer it myself. But very exciting announcement coming tomorrow about new music. Uh, and I, I'll just kind of 
tell you a little bit about it here, but it's uh, my new summer single. I've got two summer singles. One of them's already out, My City, if you've heard it. Um, and yeah, this one I'm really stoked about. This is a super, super high value production with some incredible um, Canadian producers and songwriters. It's been in the works, like My City, for a long time, and it's just felt like the right time to put it out there. It's huge, huge summer jam. Uh, and I'm gonna announce tomorrow when it's coming out. So yeah, I can maybe maybe play you a bit uh, before we're done. Have you seen Invincible? No, I don't know what that is. Invincible. Have you ever watched footage of past conventions that were? You know, that's funny because sometimes they come up in my recommended YouTube videos, and so I end up watching like the first two minutes of panels of me as like a child, and I'm like, oh my gosh. I, you know, I, I don't really cringe though. That was always, uh, I'm, I'm proud of my younger self for being always so extroverted and um, so comfortable in those situations when, you know, when you look back, you realize, oh yeah, I was quite young, but um, it was uh, real fortunate to grow up in that kind of environment and, and feel comfortable in myself to do public speaking. And uh, aren't I gonna stay for brunch? Of course, I'm always, forever and always, infinitely gonna stay for brunch. Abso freaking lovely. <laughs> now, see, Camille, you were copying my emoji. That's my favorite emoji, the little disco guy. I feel like I'm that little disco guy all the time. I'm like so stoked to dance like the little disco man. <laughs> oh, I absolutely can, uh, Arrow Maker. I want it now, and I will put that on my next uh, one of my next signings too, because that's a good that's a good quote from F Bloom. She wants it now. Do you have any got any apples? Cause I want them now. There you go. Okay, Brian. Brian. Oh, you asked for this picture, Brian. This is a collection of uh, some of my biggest characters there. Lucy and Wendy from Peter Pan. And uh, that's Alice from Martha Speaks. I don't know if you guys know these two. You probably wouldn't. Probably wouldn't. Uh, you're, uh, you know, you're you're here for for my puppy, I'm, I'm assuming. Where's puppy? I'd, li I'd like to bring puppy on the live stream. Can't do a live stream without him anymore. Puppy! He's expecting Papa to throw him that candy cane. He sits he sits at the dining room table and with his uh, candy cane toy and just waits for dad to throw it, like for hours and hours, like during dinner and when he's eating lunch. He's very persistent. Okay, Brian, I'm gonna number this first. Oh, my poochie princess, how are you doing? <laughs> how are you doing, Moogs? You need a haircut. You need a haircut so bad, Mugina. You're getting, you're getting a haircut soon. I can't even see your eyes, Papachino. Oh, hello. I missed you, I haven't barely seen you all morning. You want to help me sign, Pop? You want to stay here? Can I hold you in this arm and help me sign? Okay, yeah, you stay here. Mwah. Oh, yes, thank you, puppy. Okay, so this one's for Brian. So we're gonna go, hey Brian. Oh, this is a really thick Sharpie. Well, too bad, we already started. Three, hey Brian. It's not that thick, don't worry. It's just like, boom, in your face. I'm take the pup. No, I got the pup. <laughs> I don't know what the problem is. Huh. Hey Brian. Hugs. From, okay, maybe you need to take the pup from me. And A, B, Michelle, whoop, Michelle, Freebird, I'm gonna add my little apple, yeah, hey Brian, hugs from me, and A, B, Michelle, Kreber. beautiful, that was good, Moose, well done, good luck taking this puppy from me, Mom, good luck, if he's staying still, he's staying in my, in my arms. <laughs> I love you too much. This is why you have attachment issues, because I have attachment issues to you. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. I understand, Papacino. Okay, and this next one is blank, and it's a special instructions, Kitty Mark Crusaders. Okay, so I know what to do with what that. What kind of dogs are Moose and Max, uh, Katie wants to know? Max is like, I swear, 95% oh, Corgi. <laughs> um, no, Max is actually, he's supposed to be a Yorkie Poodle. That's gotta be a lie. He, there's like no freaking way. Well, like if he was... He's like a Yorkie-ish. Standard poodle, maybe. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, okay. Yeah, you do have to take the pup and back. And Moose is a Yorkie. Uh, so, so I can't answer, sign with a puppy. He's gotten so big now. Oh, Moosey is just a Yorkie. Look at That's just all Yorkie right there. 
Oh, you are gang gang. When you play. Yeah, okay. Well, that's nice, Moogie. See you in a bit, pup. Yeah, you could just chill here. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, walk around for I'll for sure. Feel free. Oh, he's, I don't think he would. Okay. Kitty Mark Crusaders. I'm going to just say hello from the Kitty Mark Crusaders then. Hello. <laughs> don't bite my pen. From the CMCs, Moogie. <laughs> Michelle Kreber. Hello from the CMCs. Michelle Kreber. There you go. Whoever you are, thank you. Didn't say a name, so hi. <laughs> Alrighty, good. We're almost uh, we're almost done. Boom chakalaka. There you are. Ah, speaking of you, Camille, you asked for an on display CD. Let me get one for you. Open that. Uh, get you know what I'm getting here, my handy dandy CD opener. It's the weirdest thing. It's got this little, little spike ceramic at the chip. end. Yeah, a little ceramic chip at the edge there. It's really useful. Uh, this is my second last CD. This is 2018 on display. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun one. Where's my... I had a garbage can here once upon a time. Oh, here we go. Uh, okay, it's fine, please. Are you favorite lyric? Ooh, write my favorite lyric from any song on the album. If you think of one, please, could you write a flowers born amongst the darkness? Oh, if you can't think of one, please write a flowers born amongst the darkness and the rubble. Oh, I like that though, Camille. I, I and don't, it's gonna turn around. Sure yeah, it's well, there. Okay, yeah, I like that. I, I want. That's one of my favorite lines actually. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that anyways. So, there you go. <laughs> okay, I like that. Alrighty. Okay, yeah. I'm just gonna write on this whole thing. Flower is born. The monks. Oh no, do I have enough room? The darkness. That's moose. That's not. That's moose. <laughs> that's not my like stomach or something. <laughs> The darkness and the rubble. Boom. Mesh. Boom. There you go, Camille. I had to write over the entire thing <laughs> because you did. I wish they made thin sharpies of these because on display it was a certain coloring that the black markers don't really show up. So anyways, I wrote for Camille, a flower is born amongst the darkness and the rubble. Love, Mish. So there you go. Thanks, Camille. And I got to get a little sticky for this one because I don't want to write on the back. Okay. Um, okay. We're almost done, folks. You know, if any of you have been here from the beginning, thank you. This is a, a long stream now. But I just thought, since we're already set up, it didn't really make any sense to, to start a new stream. But of course, I wanted to make sure everyone who ordered something got it all signed live. So, all good stuff. And also, if anybody has any last orders, I'll go do them now. Because the story is open until Sunday, but I'm probably not going to do another setting session. Um, if someone does order something tomorrow, I'll probably like film a video. Or maybe we could do like a five minutes. Or include it in your next yeah, vlog or whatever. Exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. Let's do a, like a little video for you or something. Okay, perfect. There we are. All right, two more. Boom, boom, boom. We got Leora. Can you put your favorite apple bloom quote, please? Oh, you know I can. You know I'm capable. Here we go. All right. Number that ish. I'm going to number the last one, too, before I forget. Yep, yep, yep. Fabulous. Camille got her wisdom teeth removed yesterday? Good lord, everyone's getting their wisdom teeth removed. <laughs> How are you feeling, Camille? Yeah. Okay. Hi. Oh, this is a nice Sharpie. I like you, Mr. Sharpie. Hi, Leora. Got any apples? Because... Want um? I was about to say um mm, because she doesn't say want them. Want them? 
No! And then we got AB. Uh-huh. Little apple. Gotta do the apple every time. And show. Reaver. Hi, Leora. Got any apples? Cause I want them now! AB. Boom chakalaka. Thank you, Leora. <laughs> All right. Kepanol wants to know where was Moose adopted? Ooh, where was Moose adopted? Well, unfortunately, I mean, I'm a big, ooh, sorry, I wiggled the whole thing there. Uh, I'm a big believer, obviously, if you can find an animal that you want as a pet to be adopted, I think that's the most, um, you know, that's, that's the best method to give a, a dog who doesn't have a home a home. Uh, but unfortunately, and well, not unfortunately, <laughs> very fortunately, I would say, because of the pandemic, everybody was adopting dogs. So there were like no dogs from, that were like at from a, SPCA. From a rescue. Yeah. Right. But you still adopted moose. Uh, well, of course. So from no. a breeder. Yeah. yeah, no, of course. But um, we adopted Dude, our, our ferret. Uh, do you want to get Dude? <laughs> yeah. Show, show him Dude. They probably got to go for a run anyways. Um, he's from the SPCA in Victoria, which is a city very close to Vancouver on the island, on Vancouver Island. So, you ever see the map far left of Canada, that little strip down there? That's Vancouver Island. And here's Duty, who is from Victoria there. So he was adopted. And poor thing was in very rough shape when we got him, but he's been very happy uh, every year since. Right, pup? You little, like, little puppy ferret? He's so big, he could basically be a puppy. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, Duty, we got one last one here. Well, Hammy wants to say Oh, well, too. can't leave Hammy out of it. Hammy loves the spotlight. Let's be real here. Uh, Moose, yeah, so wasn't adopted, but he's from a breeder um, out kind of on the skirts of uh, Vancouver, like central Vancouver. Hammy's sleeping. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. You look <laughs> sleepy. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry for interrupting your sleep, but it's time to run, probably. These are my ferrets. If you didn't know I had ferrets, now you do. Hi, Hammy. Yes, I know. That's very nice. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye sweet. to the... For noodles. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. 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 Good. Good. Last. Uh, last one here, and then I'll wrap things up. This one is for Jose Chaveria. Chaveria. Ch Chaveria. Jose Chaveria, probably, or Chaveria, one or the other. Um. Okay. Cool. Oh, Javier. Javier. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Jose Javier. No, it's Javiera. Then it would be. Anyways. Hello. If you're here, Jose. Uh, okay, no instructions, so I'm just going to do my classic quote to end it out. Someone says possum, question mark? No, ferret, but close. <laughs> okay. Hey, Jose. Aren't you gonna stay? Camille, I will try to check back for that email. Oh, yeah. Hey. Burr. Brunch. A.B. And Michelle. Creeper. Beautiful. There we go. Done. <laughs> that's a good sound. Beautiful. Alrighty, guys. That's it. We're good. Jose, I said, aren't you going to stay for brunch? From Michelle Creeper. So that's me, and that's who I am, and there is your print. Complete! Yay! Everything's complete! Fantastic. Alrighty, well, you guys, that was really, really fun, and uh, thank you for joining the live stream earlier and for, for sticking around here for our little, uh, that's a little signing session. This has been really fun, and what a great experiment, too, to do kind of like a, a little virtual convention. Um, it's, been, it's been really, really fun. And she, Michelle Krieber, how have you been doing? I've been doing so well. I'm, I, you know, I'm missing real life and I'm missing traveling and all of the above, but the been able to just keep on rolling. I miss everybody like crazy, but I think the times are changing around now and just things are really looking, looking positive and bright. So it's been great to reconnect with everyone that's a fan of the show. And um, for those of you guys who I mostly know now through through music stuff that uh, you guys originally found me through MLP, it's always fun to kind of go back and, and reminisce on, on the show itself. So anyways, guys, that was uh, really fun. And uh, yeah, hope to hope to see you in person very soon.
Let me know if you have any more questions. I'm, I'm pretty good at responding on uh, the socials. It's just Michelle Kreber everywhere. I'm, I'm so easy <laughs> to, to find. It's just Michelle Kreber. So yeah, Twitter, Instagram, wherever. Hook me up and uh, nice, to, nice to chat with you all. Thank you so much. Alrighty.